Gary, round 16 and a nine-goal first quarter with the Breeze set up our victory over Sandringham away from home. And I know you always say that often as coach you're hard to please, but despite the fact that we only kick two goals after quarter time, I'm sure if someone said to you yesterday morning that we'll give you a 22-point win, you would have taken it every day of the week. Oh, absolutely, Sam. Sandringham were coming off six straight wins and, of course, we were four. And certainly, I think if you go back over our history, though, we do play pretty well down there at Trevor Barker over. So that was really good for us to, I guess, one, win the toss and uh, two, to score nine goals. As I like to tell the boys, it's pretty powerful footy. And I thought the first half certainly went a long way to us winning the game to obviously restrict Sandringham to, I guess, uh, five goals by half time when they'd been scoring, I think, in the vicinity of 16 or 17 in a whole match, I thought was pretty impressive. And if not, again, for some probably, I guess what I'd say, maybe slightly less purposeful and intent going inside our forward 50 in the third quarter, it could have been perhaps a uh, slightly bigger win. But, yeah, we'll take it, and that's five on the trot and uh, sets us up for a big game against Willie this week. Uh, and we can probably talk about the effect that the Breeze had on the result, but I can only assume uh, that the most pleasing aspect for you must have been that attacking style of football we played in the first term. But then following that, what probably rubber-stamped the victory was the way we were able to defend uh, against the wind in that second quarter. Yeah, most definitely, and that's what you always look at. It's OK to have the breeze, but, of course, then we know that uh, come quarter time, that's our first go at it, and we'll only get one more time, and obviously Sandringham will get two. And uh, even again in the third quarter, even though I think we kicked one goal five from memory, they were obviously struggling to score as well. And uh, going in at three-quarter time, I felt reasonably confident purely and simply on the basis that we were 11 and they were five goals and I think they would have had to score eight goals in a quarter even and that was with us not scoring to basically uh, cut that lead back so and get in front. But overall, again, in that last quarter, I thought we defended pretty well and uh, we just had to make sure that if we did go forward, which we're always going to create some sort of opportunities that hopefully we could nail that and maybe young Dan Bettison was a bit unlucky that... Uh, According to the umpire, it came off his knee, but from where we saw it, it was probably more uh, lower. So, But again, we're very pleased. And I think some of the things we did in relation to Josh Tynan going into the forward line with two goals and a little bit of pressure and young Dan Bettison, who got his first game at senior VFL level, even though he might not have actually had a lot of stats, but I thought he had some really important, I guess, contests that he had to have. And uh, he's a big boy, he's 190 centimetres, so if he puts a bit of weight on he'll be even bigger. And he's got a little bit of pace. So I think overall, most of the things that we worked on were there, uh, as in evidence to see that they uh, gave us something different. And uh, again, we're very happy to come away with a win. And so you mentioned uh, Josh Tynan and Dan Bettison, but who were some of the standouts from your point of view individually yesterday as well? Well, you probably can't go past the guys in the midfield, I thought. Both Khan and uh, young Lockie Waddell certainly had their work cut out for them with the three big boys from Sandy, and I thought they battled pretty hard. Obviously, Tommy O'Sullivan had mid to high 30 possession game again. Toby Pimwell similarly. Uh, Matty Arnott just continues to get some really good form up at the minute. Shannon Lang, Mac Ravette, Damien Masidi. Chris Kane, it was probably one of our more better performers uh, or performances in relation to who played well on the day from a contribution point of view. And that's always going to have to be our go because if we drop off too much, then we'll come back to the field pretty quickly, I think. Uh, and this Saturday, there's no bigger test than coming up against the reigning premiers who are again sitting on top uh, at this stage of the season. Both sides will be off a six-day break, but you must really be relishing another opportunity to test yourself against what we know are definitely the benchmark. Well, that's true, mate, because everyone keeps saying that we're not beating anyone who's above us, but you can only beat whatever the fixture throws out to you. And, of course, we know that Sandringham were coming in off pretty good form. Willie's the same, and we go back to, I guess, early in the season where we probably did a lot of things right except uh, some poor entries and obviously some wayward kicking in the hurricane down there. So we'll need to be at our best, but we're back at home and we've got the next two weeks at home. And this is a pretty important game because of where other sides are having to, I guess, compete against one another in and around where we are. And um, if you want to continue to go forward and obviously play a significant part in the finals, well, Williamstown's certainly going to have a big say in what they do in relation to defending their title. So we've got a lot of respect for them. We 
know the way that they play and of course they'll come in pretty confident but so should we and uh, again we'll just do all our research look at what we can do to combat their strengths and uh, hopefully we can dismantle them this week. And finally, just how close are guys like Spuddy Dwyer and Mitch Golby away from a return to the field? And we also saw uh, Josh Scaponi play some pleasing footy yesterday, kicking four goals in the Development League loss. So he staked his claim for a senior recall too. Yeah, he did. And look, we know Josh is a little star. And of course, it's only been some soft tissues that have been a little bit of a problem with him. But certainly he puts his hand up, as you said, because he was certainly one of the better players in maybe what somewhat was a disappointing game by a development team yesterday. They had a really good opportunity, good strong side. And Sammy Dwyer, we hope, is going to put his hand up to have a crack at maybe playing a half this week. That'll depend on what he does on uh, today, Wednesday and Friday. And Mitchie Golby's in a similar, I guess, boat. So we'll look at selection and uh, see where they're both at. Mitch has been in really good form too prior to him hurting his shoulder. So he has a little bit more claim, I guess, to uh, coming back into the seniors. But Sammy's obviously had, what's that, 17 or 18 weeks. So we'll just be really happy if he has a good week on the track, progresses a little bit more, aims to play a half. And then if that's North Ballarat, we play... The development boys play Frankston, I believe, so he'd probably aim for three quarters and then maybe if all things go well, he gets a good week off with the bye and we'll see what happens the week after that. Sounds like some welcome selection headaches to come. Thanks for your time, Gary. Enjoy the build-up this week. Yeah, good on you, Sam.